Casey was actually eating this earlier. I was like, no, you can't eat the book. <laughs> Why don't I eat my book? <laughs> and he sees my face and he goes, like he knows. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh, I love it. Um, well, anyway, congratulations on it. It's absolutely, it's so exciting. Super Tractor, New York Times bestseller already. It's amazing. So I actually have started reading it and I've also, I've started to discover some things I really need to work on for myself. I realized I was a pusher. Yep. I was like, oh yes, need to work on this. Um, but I, I mean, I love, I've always loved anything to do with like attracting what I want, manifesting. Um, I feel like it's actually been a huge part of what's help to get me to where I am today. And I feel like this is something that so many people need. I mean, I was reading this part of the front. Super Tractor is a manifesto for confidently claiming your desires. In these pages, you will learn how to do less and attract more. Relax and trust that what you desire is on the way. Know that spiritual guidance is available to you at all times. Feel a sense of awe each day as you witness miracles unfold. I'm like, who? everyone needs this book. Who doesn't want that, right? I know, exactly. <laughs> so I was gonna ask, um, why, how come you wrote this? Because obviously you've got so many amazing books already. So why this? I wrote it because I wanted to feel good. I was in a place in my life where I was feeling misaligned and I shared very openly about that in the first chapter. And I was ready to, I was ready to feel better. I wanted to feel that connection that I knew was available to me. And so I knew that by writing it and would just be a really powerful way of reinforcing the truth that I have lived by for my throughout the last 20 years right so yeah uh yeah and it worked it made me feel good and i've returned to it and returned to it and returned to it teaching it now as i'm out of the book tour is just like so awesome because it's just it feels so good to teach yeah you know it's, it's a nice it's a nice experience to be to be healed by your own work i love that so much because i feel like all the time um it's like we need most what we are actually teaching. Like I always talk about like mindset and, and, and you know, attracting things. And I feel like it's good. I'm always falling off the bandwagon with it myself and just need something to help pull me back on track with everything. But, you know, I feel like so many of us do struggle with this. Um, could you share a little bit more about like how you have actually struggled with actually manifesting what you want? I think that the biggest, there are certain areas of my life that have always been in complete flow, uh, particularly in my career, just full faith. I know if I want to do it and I'll, I'll create it. I know that if it's, if it's in the service of others, it will have success. <clears throat> but of course I've had, I've had moments where those successes might have been blocked because the energy was off. So while that faucet is always on, I've, I've definitely blocked it at times because I've been so stressed out or um, pushing, like I talk about in the book, or trying too hard ultimately. And that energy of just pushing and controlling is one of the biggest blocks to attracting. So, <clears throat> you know, I think that that will be for anyone that's an entrepreneur, and I know that's a big part of your crowd, this is a really, is a really important part of this book, which talks about the different ways that we block our super attractor power. And uh, this is actually an excellent book for spiritual entrepreneurs because there's a whole chapter on how, you, how there's enough to go around. And it was a chapter that I wrote in devotion to my spiritual key masterclass students because I started noticing the same theme coming up for them, Carrie, that was like, they'd come in, but then they'd, they'd come into the training really excited and knowing that they were ready to just thrive. And then they would kind of start to get back backpedal into that story of who am I to do this? So-and-so has already done it. I don't have enough. I'm not worthy. I've, I've never studied enough. All of the stories, all of the stories, and you're, you're shaking your head because you know them. Yeah. And that chapter I wrote for them, which is all about how we can release that lack mentality and clear the belief system that there's not enough to go around and shift that, that energy that we have to compete and compare. Uh, because all that energy is is a major block to our super attractor power. I mean, that's will obviously res resonate with practically every single entrepreneur out there. Like, yep. I, mean, I remember for me, like it took me three years to go from having the idea to create FEA to actually doing it, mostly because I was like, who am I to do this? It's so insane how much we actually block ourselves from, from creating what we want. Um, and it, so for those people who are feeling that way now, who are like, 
I know I want to create something amazing. And, and it's like, like, it's like, for me, I used to feel like I was like pushed against the glass window and everything that I wanted felt like it was right there on the other side. I just couldn't break through. I felt, I felt so blocked. Yeah. Um, and so for anyone listening right now, that's just like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like I'm right there. Um, like what, what, I mean, I know this book's jump up packed full of stuff. So everyone needs to go through it anyway, but like, what are some of the things that people can start doing to unblock themselves? There's a very um, important method that I teach throughout the book. That's a three-step process that that shows up many times throughout the book as a guide. And it's called the choose again method. And it's simple. It's really first witnessing the fear-based thought that's blocking you, right? And look, witnessing the thought, noticing the thought and noticing how it makes you feel. So you might write that down in your journal or think it to yourself. The second step is to forgive yourself for having the thought and to forgive the thought altogether. So forgive the thought. The third step is to choose again. And this is you know, straight out of the, uh, the, the, the teachings of Abraham Hicks. So choose the next best feeling thought. Choose a thought that feels better than the one that you just had. Not saying, you know, I have no money, I'm broke to being like I'm a millionaire, but saying I'm, I don't have enough money, but I'm in Carrie's program and I'm learning through her and abundance is on the way and reaching for the thoughts that feel good. And that's a very proactive practice of, of looking at the thought, bringing it to love and choosing again looking at the thought, bringing it to love and choosing again. And if you can even just master that, you'll see a great shift in your life. I totally agree with that. I feel like that simple process for me helped transform, you know, areas of my life so much. I used to get really bad anxiety and I was so fed up with my own crap. I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, why am I keeping myself feeling stuck in this place? So I literally just started with that. And at first it felt like, oh, there's no point in this. It's not really working. But then after a while I was like, oh, just gone and I just it just went and it's just so powerful um I just I love stuff like that um so what I mean for anyone out there who's just really excited about like this new pathway of like you know starting to attract and manifest um in terms of like the actual connecting with what it is that you want side so many people are like how do you know what you want like i hear that so often i don't have clarity i don't really know like what do you say to people that are feeling like that well you know what you don't want right so if you know what you don't want it's a clear direction to what you do want yeah so if you don't want to feel stressed then you want to feel peace if you don't want to be feel broke you want you want abundance if you don't want to feel alone you want connection so, so if you don't know exactly what you want, then get clear about what you don't want and then reverse it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the easiest way to do it. Um, there was something I actually wrote in this book, which I thought was particularly interesting for so many of us. It was on, I, wrote, I wrote down the page number. It was on page 148. You were talking about um, manifesting isn't about having total control and it's not even about potentially getting what we think we want. Um, and I thought this was really interesting for all the people out there that are like, well, I've set this goal, but it's not happened. I haven't manifested it. And they just feel really disappointed or feel like a failure. Um, and I thought this was kind of interesting. It's like, it's not necessarily about like, okay, you get this, this, this in your life. Can you just talk a little bit more about that? For those yeah, people that are like, I don't that's a really want. important distinction. So if there's something that we desire and we don't get it, that's, that's a good thing. That typically means that there's some form of misalignment. And so if we're misaligned and we did get it, we wouldn't be able to keep it. So, or we would sabotage it. So if there's something that doesn't attract into our life, it's just revealing to us that either that there's something better on the way and that there's still some parts of us that don't, that are not fully aligned with what that desire is. Uh, But I like to believe that there's something, that there's, there's something better on the way, even if that something better is the opposite of what I wanted because that will always reveal to me something greater in the next phase of my own personal development. So uh, I don't think you should judge your ability to manifest. I think that the reality is the more aligned you get, if you read Super Attractor, you practice these principles, you get into alignment, you start feeling good, you will begin to effortlessly manifest because it's just the law. If you are in a vibration that's, that's abundant, that's joyful, that's, that's free, then you attract what you desire quite quickly. Uh, if your energy is misaligned, even slightly, then your attracting will be a little off. So this book isn't really about how to get things. It's about how to feel good. 
I love that. I love that distinction so much. I think it's just so true. And I, I know for myself, like when I realize that this is all about feeling good, it just, you just let go of, you just let go of like trying so hard and just kind of, I don't know, I kind of see everything as like an exploration and just like opening myself up to the possibilities and just, I don't know, growth as well, like personal growth. Um, um, but I, and like, you know, I, mean, I have had phases where I felt like I'm on fire and I'm so aligned and I just, those are the, those are the times when I felt the best. Um, so I feel like I'm constantly trying to like get back. So here's place. my advice to you and to everyone listening. Instead of constantly trying to get back, make your desire to create a sustainable energy that is going to support you. And that sustainability comes through the same practices daily, right? The devotional practices. So, you know, your meditation, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but a daily devoted meditation practice, a devoted prayer practice, if that were an intention setting practice, choosing again all throughout the day, right? But having those things that you don't return to when you hit your bottom, but that you sustain throughout your life daily in order to keep the momentum. Yeah. Because we're all just uh, energy frequencies. And so if that frequency is, is out of alignment with the peace, calm, love, and joy, God universe, then we're going to constantly feel like we're flailing. But when we make the biggest commitment in our life to feel good, to, to be at ease, and use whatever tools work for us regularly, then there's a sustainability that we'll begin to experience. And that's when that's when big things happen and you don't even really care. It's not that you don't care. Like, <clears throat> like this was a good feeling. And maybe it's some of it could be that it's not the first time, so I didn't care. But, you know, I knew that I was spiritually well when Patty, my our publisher, emailed me yesterday and said, you're number three on, the book's number three on the New York Times list. And I was like on a call with my therapist and I saw the email come in and I was like, oh, cool. I'm number three on the New York Times list. <laughs> And let's get back to my drama, right? Like, let's get back to my childhood, whatever we were talking about in the moment. My therapist was like, do you want to celebrate it? Do you need to call anybody? I'm like, no, I can do that in a half an hour. I feel pretty good right now. Like, I, it's not that I didn't care because what that means to me was that, you know, it's serving many people, many people are reading the book, but it wasn't going to give me a high anymore. Like, the high comes from knowing I'm, I'm healing people. Like what's been so beautiful for me is just being able to witness all the people's transformations. And that's a sign of my, of, of, of my spiritual fitness. Now it's easy to say because I've had many bestsellers. So it's not like, so I know that there's some of that in there, but I think plenty of people could have countless accomplishments behind them and still need that high every time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was just pretty proud that that high wasn't so necessary. Yeah. And I think that that's what starts to happen when you start to get really grounded in the purpose of the work and the purpose of your life, which is to feel good and help other people feel good. Yeah, I think that it's, it's you know, but that's hit home for a lot of people, like the simplicity of what our purpose actually is, instead of yes. like trying so hard to find something. Yes. <laughs> purpose. That is the purpose. That's right. Um, just because I want to know selfishly for myself, <laughs> just when I had Casey last year, um, it kind of like threw me off a little bit. Like, I mean, I love being a mum and I love everything about it, but it definitely made me feel so out of alignment, especially with my work. Like I felt really off track. And so for anyone out there who is a mum or is about to become a mum, you know, when you had your son, did you feel any of that? And I'm not sure if you've heard me talk about this, but I had severe postpartum anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, no, I, I went into the darkest corner of my life. And I've been speaking very publicly about this, and I'm, gl I'm glad we're talking about it here because you have a lot of moms listening. And it's something that people are too ashamed to get help. And I wound up being medicated, and um, like I would have died. I was, I was suicidal at points. Wow. So um, it was the darkest experience of my life. And I've had some dark experiences, but that was the worst. Uh, so I just want to really sh call that out loud. Recognize that even if you didn't, weren't diagnosed with postpartum, you were experiencing it. Because you're, you have a biochemical response after you have a child. And for some people, it's 
seems just like over you know, overstressed and off balance and for others it can lead to suicidal thoughts so my prayer for anyone listening is that if it feels off balance go talk to somebody now so that you can stay on track with it if it gets worse because when it gets worse it's bad yeah okay um and it was a great, great, great experience for me in retrospect, because now I can speak very authentically to mental health conditions mm -hmm. because I, I had severe depression. I wasn't, I had insomnia. My child was sleeping and I hadn't slept for four months. So, but he was sleeping through the night. And, uh, and then of course that leads to suicidal thoughts and depression. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's no joke. Yeah. Especially if you're an entrepreneurial mom and you have the pressures of your business and your career and the pressures of your child and the biochemical stuff happening and the hormonal things happening. So um, it's no fucking joke. Excuse my language. I'm just trying to emphasize the importance of this conversation. And I know in the UK that it's not it's, it's not as common to seek psychiatric help or therapeutic help. Yeah. But, you know, people die from this. And so if you're listening to me right now, let me be a power of example that it's okay to, to seek help. It's okay to have uh, medical support if you need it for a period of time. And, and it's, it's not even okay. It's mandatory for your life and for your family. Yeah, no, that's so true. And it's, it's, it's also really good to talk about this stuff because I think so many people go through it, like you said, silently and yes. don't actually speak up. Um, yeah, it took me a while, like a at least till he was eight months before I kind of like felt back in the flow of, or not even in the flow of the first, just this early, that early feeling of starting to feel like, okay, things are kind of getting back to normal. Yeah, totally. Um, but, um, but I think I'm sure all the things that you're sharing in your book are such helpful things to help people even get through, you know. I think probably the most important thing that someone will get from this book is the, is the, um, in my own, personal truth I tell a lot of vulnerable stories and I hope that helps the reader recognize that it's cool to be vulnerable it's safe to be vulnerable it's the most important thing we could do so that we can get the help that we need yeah and to recognize that there's guidance around us at all times yeah um, well this is an amazing book and I highly recommend everyone go and check it out I'm very excited to finish reading it because like this is definitely something I need in my life right now I feel like you could never hear this stuff enough like, and I think it's also powerful, like I love Abraham Hicks, but like you say it in your way and that resonates differently. And so I think it's just so powerful. Um, the book, yeah, the book is very, very um, inspired by the work of Abraham and I mentioned Abraham 23 times in the book. I just looked it up <laughs> yesterday. Um, but to your point, it's a lot, it's a lot of my own methods and my interpretation and yeah. some of what, some of which may not be com completely aligned with Abraham, you know? So it's taking what I believe and bringing it to life. Um, and the thing I, I know that this book is having a, 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 a beneficial effect on people because my friends, my best friends, who have listened to me talk for the past 20 years, who have read every single book, who have sat in every single lecture, are texting me saying, wow, I need this now. That, to me, is a sign. Yeah. Because, you know, these are the people that might just be like, I've read every book. I, I talk to her every day. I don't need this. Yeah, that's really powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, well, I am very, very excited about diving into this. Now, one, once my launch is over, I'm going to be like reading it up and just going to go somewhere, chill out and read your book. And I really hope it serves you completely, yeah. I know it will. So yeah, thank you for writing such an incredible book. Um, and thank you for coming to talk to us about it. I'm, I think, you know, the simple, um, you know, the, well, they are simple, but they're really powerful though. The tips you shared earlier about reframing like our thoughts are just so powerful. I think that if, you know, if anyone watching just goes and does that in itself, like that is life changing. So, so yeah, so thank you so much. Um, everyone go and get Gabby's book on Amazon and I'm sure it's in every single bookstore you could possibly go into. Um, and yeah, go and check out everything that Gabby's got. I'll leave all the links for you. Um, so yeah, go and enjoy Gabby's book. Gabby, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Carrie, thank you, my love. Oh, thank you.